Hey guys, it's Vanessa. Yes, this is a Notion related video, but I'm gonna do this intro while preparing my morning coffee. Um, I'm pretty sure you've already seen tons of these Notion tutorials flying around YouTube. I remember hearing about Notion the first time over a year ago on Ali Abdel's channel, and he made such a great video on how he used it to boost his productivity. So I downloaded it, cracked it open, and the next thing I know, I'm completely overwhelmed by all the buttons and options in it. Unfortunately, at that time, I had so much to study, I just couldn't be bothered, so it's been set aside. It wasn't until a few months later, a friend of mine showed me his laid out of Notion and taught me about it step by step that I finally started to understand the whole system. I've been using Notion for half a year now and it completely changed my life. I gradually set up a template for my own workflow and it not only pumps up my productivity but also helps me structure all the medical knowledge I learned every single day. For those who haven't heard about Notion, it's a highly versatile app that everyone can use in almost every aspect of their lives and you can easily customize it to precisely fit your needs. Now if you haven't already, pause this video now, go to Notion.com and download the app to your laptop. I'm going to take you through the very beginning of your life-changing experience with Notion. I'm going to assume you guys watching this video is whether a medical student or a uni student. If you are, please create a Notion account with your .edu email that your school gave you. When you click on the Settings and Members button on the left column, you can see all the four subscription plans Notion provides. And if you take a closer look at this table, you understand that there are two main differences between free plan and personal plan. Number one, the number of the block is unlimited in personal plan. When you finish typing down a sentence and press enter, the sentence becomes a block. You can move it around and put it wherever you want. So if you have a limited block count, that means one day you might not be able to add any word to your notes. The second difference is the storage space for uploading files. I'm sure there will be a point that you want to embed some files to your notes, like a PDF or pictures that help you understand better. I'll suggest everyone to get at least the personal plan so that you can upload all the files and pictures you want. Here's the best part, you're able to save $4 per month to get the personal plan for free just by logging in with your .edu email address. When you log in, you'll see a column on your left. You can create several workspaces here and in each workspace you can add different pages. On the upper right, there are three dots that include some adjustable options. You can see here two options, small text and full width. My suggestion is turn on both of them or at least the full width because as you can see here, the presentation immediately spreads into the width of your screen, which means less scrolling, less ATP wasting, and more time saved while you're browsing through your notes. Honestly, I'm not the dark mode kind of person, but if you are, the thing you need to know is you have to be careful with your color of choice. More specifically, the background color. A lot of times you'll add background as highlights, but when you go into the dark mode, the colors won't be so distinctive. See here, the color orange and blue is quite obvious, but let's turn on dark mode. It's kind of hard to tell the difference now. My suggestion is, if you insist on using dark mode, maybe instead of changing background color as highlight, just change the text color.
The one feature of Notion I found the most helpful is the search function. When studying, there are a lot of times that I'll come across an enzyme or maybe a clinical sign that I know for sure I've learned it before. And I vaguely remember it sits on the lower left page of somewhere, but I just couldn't recall. I used to flip through all the textbooks, wasting over half an hour and maybe end up with nothing. But now with Notion, I can pull out my old notes in no time, pick up the memory and keep on learning new things. If you press Command F, you can search on the recent page. But in most occasions, you might want to use Command P to search for keywords in the whole workspace that contains all of the notes you've ever made. The last tip is my absolute favorite, and it's not limited to use only in Notion. Open the settings on your MacBook, go to Keyboard, press Text, you'll see a table that you can set up your own shortcut. For example, I use a lot of Greek alphabet and arrow signs, so I set up shortcuts like when I type alpha, A-L-P-H-A, and press space, it'll automatically turn into the Greek alphabet. This tip saves me a huge amount of time by not having to control command space to active the character viewer every single time I need to type in arrow. So there you go! Here are the 5 tips I found very useful for beginners to start building your own Notion system. If you have other useful tips, please share it with me in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw and you'd like to see more, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. Also, subscribe and ring the bell. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.